Peace, love, and light, my beautiful gods and goddesses. I am Queen Spirit, and we have Queen Maisha. Hey. We got Queen Cheryl. Hello, everybody. We got Queen V. Hey, y'all. And Queen V, who you got for your guest? I have my king, Ennis. Yes, yes. Welcome. Welcome, Welcome to Veggie Me, please, y'all. So today, we are going to get back to the basics. We are going to start this healing process. And the way to start the healing process is you have to start with your heart. Your heart will not allow you to go any further in your journey if it's broken, if it's damaged. So we're going to talk about healing your heart. So now we got a man on the podcast, y'all. Y'all know we finna grill him. We finna get into it. So my first question that I want to ask you is, when men hearts get broken, why is it so hard for them to heal? It's not really hard for us to heal, but it's just that we like to hold on to things, you know. So we don't want it. We don't want it to heal in order for us to move forward, you know. So like sometimes we just keep on holding on to stuff like that, but we keep on going forward because that actually motivates us to move forward. So mm -hmm. we're not gonna heal off from it. That one instinct, we're gonna just keep on moving forward and letting that be our energy source. So I have a stay question. Busy. I got a question. So y'all stay busy. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. So does that have to do with your ego? Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So does that have to do with your ego? Mm. Nine times out of ten, yes. I think so. It's yeah. <laughs> nine times so. out of ten, it do. Because I'm gonna tell you, me and my best friend, we just had. I'm not gonna say we had a falling out, but we had coming to. The universe meeting and he just lost somebody that was really close to him and i know when he, he it's just like he just threw himself into work like he don't have no time for anything else but work and i'm like this is not you you are really mourning and you're trying to you're not trying to deal with the fact that you know you had this hurt and he don't know how to deal with it. it's like me i don't even know how to help him because like with women, we'll cry about some stuff, even though we hold on to stuff too. Yeah. But we'll cry about it, and it do motivate us, but it, we still would deal with it. Like To me, it seems like it makes men bitter. When you when you got your heart broken at any point in your life, did it make you bitter? I mean, because you are super awesome to my sister. Let me yeah. say, hey, King, he is. He King, is. this is going to be your best friend, King, because he is super awesome. So <laughs> when, when, you, when your heart was broken, did, did it make you bitter? No, it didn't really make me bitter. It just made me stronger though, you know? Like it definitely made me a lot stronger than what it is. I wasn't bitter or anything like that. It's just another chapter of your life, you know? So mm. most guys, even if my heart broken, then it's gonna be another chapter. We're gonna try to close it up, but it won't, we won't be bitter about it or anything like that. That's do it make right? you do it make you standoffish though to females going forward? Like do you do you look at females like, yeah, I'm just gonna, you know, deal with you this kind of way, not really taking females serious? No, it wouldn't. No. No, because basically it's like um if it happened you can't if you're going toward another female, you can't frustrate that last past relationship into your new relationship. He's so you know, nice. so, right. so, yeah. so if you're going, so if you're going through and you're thinking about like your last relationship, basically that gonna continue. You know, yeah. they're gonna be continuing. So yeah, see, they don't make. Them, be, they, I, I haven't ran across the ones they make like you. Because, you know, I didn't either. Though we had this conversation. You remember when when we were talking about our exes? You, yeah. mm -hmm. First, he has to admit that his heart is broken. He has not admitted that yet. Well, yeah, well, I mean, but that, well, that's just my friend. But I'm saying as far as, like, even with relationships, I have... You have, I have, you have to admit it first. Well, I have been with some broken men, and I just assumed that it was because I was broken. But I even, like, even now in this part of my life, like, I still communicate with some of my old friends. And I had a friend that was like, he got trust issues. And I'm like, but I never gave you a reason to not trust me. So why are you acting like that towards me? So it's like, it's like, I just feel like some men, they don't know how to let stuff go. But I, see, sometimes women don't either. Yeah. And, and it, it's the whole thing about the heart. Yeah. It's, people think that it starts with the mind, but mm -hmm. it doesn't. It starts with the heart. Yeah. Anytime your heart is broken, you have to deal with that. Yeah, you do. And you, and if you don't deal with it, you're going to take that into your next relationship. Because the, the, the matters of your heart, you will start forming these thoughts in your head. 
Like if you dealt with a cheater, like I have, in my head, every man that I deal with is gonna cheat. So, so I always your, prepare myself for it. So your trust issues is about him or his trust issues about a female? Cause he might say he has trust issues, but his trust issue might be about him himself, you know? Mm -hmm. That he not having trust issues about himself. Then I know you're watching. Then instead trust issues about other people. So. I know mm -hmm. you're watching. Is the trust issues with females or <coughs> with yourself? That's a good question. That's a good question. I don't think that's what I was about to say off of what y'all was just saying. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's the trust issues that's based off of the other person. Mm -hmm. I don't care what the other person say. Like when me when we first started dating, like I was telling him like I was reserved because of my ex. And he was like, the same thing he just told y'all. He was like, Yeah, but you not I'm not your ex and you not my ex. Mm. Right. I had never been told that before. It was always kinda like that person trying to compare themselves better than the last person. Like, yeah. oh no, look, I ain't gonna be like that because oh, I'm gonna be like God. You know, And that's one of the reasons that. why that's one of the reasons why I stopped telling people my potential partners my story because I used to tell it so they would know what I had been through and where I came from so that they wouldn't be the same person but they were totally useless against me because they'd be like well you dealt with a crackhead I ain't no crackhead I'm just I'm just cheating on See? you so I mean I, I'm better than him and I'm like but no you're not but yeah that's dope <laughs> Y'all give me hope, King. That's gonna be my brother-in-law. That's gonna be your brother-in-law. Yes, yes. What's the question you wanted to ask, Miss Lady? Um, how do you do what? Like, if you never dealt with heartbreak, like if you even have like breakups or stuff doesn't work out, but you just either throw yourself in something else, like you said, or you just move on to the next person, or you just don't deal with it. Well, let me say this. The one thing my baby told me um, that truly broke my heart, but I dealt with it because that was something I had to deal with was I told her that not to deal with pain. I told her to suck it up. So she never knew how to deal with it. And that's because that was what was taught to me. Did that make you feel detached? Yeah, like even I don't know how to... I yeah. just deal with pain. Like when stuff happened, I mean, I just suck it up and I get it over with and I put it in a box and keep it pushing. Well, I definitely know the first thing to, to, to for the crying is like hard for me. With big crying is gonna hurt, just like what you say, Val. It's like a lamb. No, it's basically it's like cutting you, off a part. You of You keep yourself. it a part of you for so long. It's you carrying that. You know, you carrying this way of living. Everything that you do, when it comes down to your emotions, center to that. Yeah. yeah. You know, so you can't even be truthful in your own emotions because your mind is telling you nope don't feel that yeah so that's why i say like when you were saying you think it's matters of the heart you got to deal with first the mind is a powerful thing our heart is beating but our mind is telling our heart to beat it's telling mm -hmm. it to beat two two to three seconds before it does it no, no let me say this that's not true our mind do control a lot but when your if your brain is dead you still have a heartbeat and, and that's what was what, what happened with Trey. And you're going back to Trey. Yeah, Trey was brain dead, but his heart still beat. That's why he was still alive. So it, 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 the heart is the what has to be healed first. But see, that's what I was thinking, though. Like, even with that, like, them machines was doing that. Have we ever saw a situation where no. they just took you off of the machine? And his heart still beat? Yes, when they took him off the breathing machine, his Remember, heart Remember, it still took a minute to go down. It, his heart, his heart. He had a heartbeat for at least five to ten minutes after they took him off the breathing machine. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I got to, I got to beg to disagree. No, with that. no. I well, well actually, like, actually, it was long enough. It was no, long it enough. was long. I, I was right there for me to actually enough. leave out the room. Yeah. And go and question, you know, the people that are monitoring, you know, all of this. Yeah, it's when. It, it, but it, see, it, that's it, what it, I was it, saying it, though. It was like, funny, like when I was laying on top of my so did beat them. Yeah, his heart. Yeah, your 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 brain. Your brain does control everything, but your heartbeat is your life. If your heart stops beating, your brain can still be alive. If your heart stops beating, though, you're basically... We're going to do dead. some more research. Yeah, we we in cosmetology, that's something that we learned about. But I, I, am, I strongly, truly believe, like, when they be saying you brain dead, I don't think you brain dead. I think you brain dead as far as human being active, alive as it you know goes but as far as your brain still going your brain is still telling your heart because it's just like that limb 
Your brain and your heart work in unison. Your brain sends signals before your heart or anything does anything. Like, when I go like this, my brain already knew I was getting ready to do that before I did it. But we definitely gonna have to research that. I just think that mind, man, and they don't want you to know how powerful your mind is. Well, yeah, that's true. This that's is what true. we do. We read, we research, and, you know, we yeah. uh, form our own opinions. This is yeah. what we do. But at, at the end of the day, the heart and the mind, let's say that. Yeah. Let's say yeah. that. The heart and the mind are two important components in your life that definitely needs to be in unison, that need to be healthy for you to basically create your own reality. This reality that we're living in is a reality that they gave us. We want to create our own because you really have free will to have, create your own reality. You don't have to go by what they say you have to do. Your reality, like, honey, I got y'all already know what I'm going to say. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> like, y'all know. She a fairy. I, I'm a whole fairy. And it ain't because nobody told me I could be. It's because I said I wanted to be. And I am. I look good as a rainbow fairy. Y'all better quit playing with me. <laughs> so your reality is your reality. And we have to heal your heart as well as your mind. And that's one of the reasons why we have formed the book club, Melanated. Um, because we're going to be working in unison with healing the heart and healing the mind. And we are definitely uh, going to be reading this first book. Our first book is called African Religion Volume 1. Uh, you can purchase it on Amazon. You can also purchase it on the Kindle. We will be having a discussion on chapters 1, 2, and 3 on September 3rd. So if you want to join in, you definitely are welcome to. It's free. We are trying to get as many people that look like us to pick up a book and read it. Even if you don't understand it, even if you ain't, you know, you don't even get nothing from it, at least you picked it up and read it. And we're going to sit back and discuss it because the whole point of this podcast is we want to talk. And, and this is a way for us to communicate with each other. We're going to find something to talk about. So we're mm-hmm. going to start talking about some of the literature we read. We and gonna through, t- through discussion, we're going to get understanding. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're going to definitely get and some understanding. I think more importantly than that, we're rebuilding bonds. You know what I'm saying? Like, that real sincere bond between yeah. a mom and a daughter, between a girlfriend and a boyfriend, yeah. between a husband and a wife, between a daughter and a mother, between mm-hmm. sisters. Between, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can only do that through in-depth conversation. How can you say you truly got somebody or you know somebody if you can't even have a conversation? Yeah. Whether right, it make you uncomfortable right, right. or differ. And you know? big to differ because yeah. we don't always agree. As you see, we always we we have discussions, but at the end of the day, it's it's some good conversation. Yeah. And the one thing I remember on the last podcast that really, really touched me what my sister said was she don't want her kids to grow up where we came from because they don't rock like we used to rock back when grand when we had grannies and great grandmas. We got together. Nobody gets together. No all more. the cousins slept over the grandmother's oh house. We all we ate all, dinner on yes. paper plates on the floor. Seven <laughs> nights at home court. Everybody knows that house, and we all lived together, and it was unison. We don't have that no more. We we don't have that no more. And this is how we start. We can start small, and we just keep on. Gravitate more and gravitate more because we have a good time. Yeah, we fun. Mm-hmm. We are fun, honey. We let me tell you something. I sprinkle fairy dust, and when I can't sprinkle it, my sister sprinkle it for me. She just had to sprinkle some for me because I was having a bad moment, honey. But let me tell you something. It's all. It's all about unison. It's we have to stick together. God cre- created us as a family for a reason. And it's not us to us up to us to question the reason. Mm-hmm. It's up to us to just take it for what it is. And how wonderful is it to say that you got twenty and thirty cousins that if somebody pick on one, all you gotta do is push the red button and the nineteen other ones gonna come and tear something up. Right. We can't even say that. We, we can't used say, to though. We, man. <laughs> for all the wrong reasons. But keep that though. For all the wrong for reasons. All, you're right. You could only get us together like that if it was something like a fight. Or if it was something like, hey, you get to pull your strap out. Yeah. Everybody showed up. But for something like this, it's like, where is we everybody at? You can't have, have a conversation? Yeah. It's a conversation. We would love to have more of us, because there's so many of us, to join in. And let's just talk. And it ain't always it ain't always about family secrets, even though we talk about that because this is a part of our healing. It's journey. a journey. We talk about a lot of different stuff. Whatever your topic you want to talk about football, honey, let's talk passionately about some football. I don't know much about it, but I mean we can talk about it. If that's what you want to talk about. He looked like he wanted to talk about football. We can talk about it. I mean, I know about touchdowns. I know that. No, that's because we as as a, a family. Yeah. I'm not 
not to say people, but we as a family, our family, we, we did not transform. Now, I can show you pictures of my grandmother. Yeah. And I can show you pictures of my great-grandmother. And me looking at those pictures and you guys looking at me, we did not transform because I'm 64 years old. And I do not look like my 64-year-old grandmother. No, you don't. No, no, you don't. No, no, no. no. Uh -uh. And so you, we didn't we didn't transform and bring in the the young people and say, "Hey, it's okay." Uh even though I look young, I know a whole lot of stuff. You can come talk to me. Well, I'm going to listen to you. Well, let me ask you this. Do you think the ball was dropped at your generation? Yes, I do. So, yes, so, so, I so, do. That, so that's what we got to start at. Now, now, how do we start with that? Because why did, when Granny, when, when Grandpa passed away, we all still got together because Granny was here. Mm -hmm. But once Granny passed away, it's like everybody went their own way. So how, as your, for, for you and your siblings, how do we bring it back so that we can gravitate that family unity back together? We didn't know, because we used to have family reunions. Yeah. And we, we didn't know on our own, without the older people, how to bring it back. And we have to bring it back. We got to bring these young people back to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know what, though? That's what I'll be looking at. Like, that's what I look at. I look at that. Like, when we were kids, it seemed like Granny was the last strong matriarch that made everybody come out. Like, yeah. it don't matter. If you say Granny, y'all everybody better be there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But after Granny left, like you said, like, how come when anybody, when they said Auntie Sherry having a party, everybody wasn't there? Or when that they said Auntie Rosie reason, having a party, everybody wasn't there? That was one of the reasons why I created Trade Day. I created Trade Day not to uh, basically shine a light on what he did. I brought. I, I felt like it was important for us to start getting together because we lost him and nobody knew he was going through what he was going through. Right. So that's why, in honor of him, and yeah, I did it. So what? I took his name and I made it a special day, Trey Day. Let's come out. We're going to barbecue. Let's get together. Let's laugh. Let's release for blooms. Let's hug. Let's cry. And let's have a good time. It hurt my feelings so bad this last Trey Day that only a handful of people came to Trey Day. And it was like, like you said, if, I, if it would have been for Granny, because like you said, Granny was a matriarch, I feel like everybody would have came out. So why is it now that the elders are not like, look here, we going to go have Trey Day. Come on, Lena, come on, you know, uh, you know tea, should, come on, should. such no, and such. No, 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 because see, mine has been gone for a long time. Yeah, we haven't and been nothing for a long nothing. time. And <laughs> tribute to her, the way I was raised, where I come from is, uh, attention to the gravesite. We're not saying tribute to her. No, 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 no. I'm saying if she was still living. If she was still, if living, she was still the living. The family would definitely be everybody. Living. If we would have said, but how, hey, how many people do you see go to her gravesite and uh, they don't do that no more? They don't do that no more. Yeah, think about it though. You and Auntie Rosie and I was the last ones that did. Actually, me and T. When when Daddy when uh, my biological father passed away, like you tried to carry it on with me and T. And it was like me and T would go, but even T, T fell off and didn't want to be there. I remember taking the pictures and you would look at T and he like, I'm ready to go. Like, you want us to take pictures up here now? Like, you know, that's something, in. that's something that we need to do. Um, and I know you, I know about how you feel about going to Cleveland. I do. But maybe we have to be the leaders and start doing it by example. And maybe um, for, on a trade day, because it's around Memorial Day, we yeah. go we go up to the grave sites and we go visit your I'm dad and my that. dad and granny and we and we just we invite we invite. This is our official invitation. We inviting y'all next year Memorial Day weekend. We gonna come to Cleveland. We gonna we got so many people. On we that want <laughs> we want all of us to get together. Everybody get together, buy flowers. If you can't buy flowers, don't worry. We got some, and we gonna go. We gonna visit everybody. Then we gonna celebrate. We gonna make it a weekend. Of How it. great would that be? They have like three people over here on this grave site. Three people over here. During that time, amazing. we crying together. We yeah. laughing together. We sharing old memories. And that's, that's healing dope, the sis. heart. That's healing the heart. That's so dope. we are in. This is our first official. Let me tell y'all, y'all got a whole year. Don't plan nothing. <laughs> Memorial Day weekend. I'm telling y'all now. It's a lot of birthdays, but hey, sometimes you know what I'm saying? Just how you celebrate your birthday, though. Hey, you we can get all together. Your people. We, hey, Trey Day, birthday. It's a lot of birthdays all around Trey Day. Let's do it. And let's start healing our hearts because 
We tired of it. Yeah, man. We tired of it. We, tired we don't want to lose not near another one of us. Period. Period. And that's why, that's why this podcast is so important. Yeah, y'all might not agree with everything we talk about, but guess what? We got y'all to goddamn talking. Yes. We yes. got y'all to talking. I'm talking about when I say people was diligently <laughs> getting on Facebook that I never seen get on Facebook to talk about that podcast. So come on, let's talk. Now let's talk about some other stuff. Let's get some stuff off your chest. But yeah, let's talk, let's talk about Kelly. Like, ooh, yes, yes. Right? yes. Well, that's yes. Y'all know, don't Yay. Like it. Y'all got it. I, I got chills, you got honey. You got the I got chills, down. honey. I'm telling y'all, yes. And look, and my brother gonna be there. My brother, brother, don't don't make no plans because your your brother in law gonna be there too. Because I'm coming. Oh, be my brother in law, he coming. He coming. I heard, hey baby. I meditated with him. Today. Hey brother in law. Yes. I know you coming. He coming. He coming. Okay, mommy, you got some notes. Tell us what you got on your notes. Well, the steps that you go through to heal a broken heart. All right, let's go. Number one. Now we. We talked about you have to admit the fact that you have a broken heart in the first place. Okay. Because you said ego, ego. You're not the only person to have ego. Men is not the only people. That, women have ego as well. Yeah, a lot and of times we don't want to admit, especially if he is. We just sitting up like, especially if he was a low ball and he was just like giving up some sympathy and you end up catching feelings and then he dog you like man. <laughs> I know that low boy did not know he did not hunting. Yeah, we do. We have egos too. That's right. That's right. But you know what? You got to get rid of the ego. Mm -hmm. I've had to learn that myself because my ego is like they call you me Diana that? Ross. You hear that? My right? ego is bigger than Diana Ross. <laughs> and you got to let go of that ego and get in touch with yourself and be able to. You got to. You got to let. Everybody, people, know what you need. Yes. You, got, you got to talk to people and let them know what you need. But if you're one of them kind of people that can't talk to people, we have vision boards. Yeah. And instead of saying, I'm going, I am rich, I am uh, in love, put on your vision board what you need when your heart is broken. Yes. And you better preach. Every day and look at that vision board and, and read it and say, I need this because my heart is broken. Yeah, y'all better hear my mom over here mm. preaching. Mm. Y'all better hear it. And they, they never really let me talk. <laughs> for real, for me, for real, for real. But we showing out because we got company. <laughs> That's what it is. But she yeah. right. You do, you have, you have to say it and you have to say it like it's happening right now. Don't say it like you wishing for it or like you want to come later. Say it like it's now. My heart is not broken. My heart is healed. Mm -hmm. I admit that I have a, a ego and, I, and I'm and i releasing the ego and I'm opening my, my heart to unconditional love. You have to start saying it like it's really happening. Mm -hmm. Understand, baby girl? Mm -hmm. All right. What's the next one, mama? Go yeah. outside. See, see, this is what we be doing in this. We be having a good damn time. Go <laughs> So you, ha you have to go outside. I think it goes back to when I read this in the Bible, okay. and that was ri written by a white person. Ooh. But uh, uh oh, now you not rubbed up on her. <laughs> they they, oh. know, they say we came from the dirt. Mm. So let's go outside where we came from. Take off our shoes. Yeah. Walk through that. Not just grass, but dirt. Yes. Get our feet dirty and commune yes. with the ground. Honey, I'm going to go plant me a plant today, honey. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. We are as <coughs> when you get your nutrients, your energy from the earth. This is the same place that you was created from. All you got to do is just touch it. Just be open to it. But let me tell you something. Anxiety, depression, paranoia, um, not thinking you're worthy, low self-confidence, all of those are matters of the heart. And it's because either somebody or something happened to you that made you feel like you wasn't worthy mm -hmm. or that you wasn't pretty and you took it to heart and you held it there and you really? walk around with your head down because of it. Really quick, sister. Yes. Cause, and I don't want to cut you off, but um, inside of our, our book, yes, it said that egoism, um, dishonesty, 
hypocrisy, uh, negativity, all of that, those things come from set. And set is defined mm -hmm. as being everything that keeps humans from being in their true power of being goddesses. Mm. Because we were brought up on everything outside of what we feel on the inside of us being real. We discard that feeling and go with somebody told us because they said that you're doing wrong. You're doing wrong by feeling like you want to hold a crystal. They instill that in you in the Bible. Yeah. Set creates all of those different feelings and emotions and different situations that make people act the way that they act. However, when you become divine, netur, yes. recognizing your goddess or God in yourself, you start to live in your truth. And this is all called... Um, yeah, preach, girl. That's no, my little preach. Preach. But No, no, but look, though, in all honesty, <laughs> it, it makes sense because it make it, the stuff that I researched, it tied directly in. Like, I had quit working on one part, watching something totally different, reading something totally different, picked up something totally different outside of what I was doing, and then went with what I was writing. Mm. So that makes sense. We were never meant to feel those type of things, like egoism. We're not yeah. supposed to feel better than the next person. No. We're supposed to feel like we're better than the person we were yesterday because yes. we're true gods and goddesses. Yes. We're not supposed to Just be in us. competition. No. However, we live in competition because that's what the world makes you feel like. They Number one. Number two, nobody remembers. You know what I'm saying? So that's the mentality they taught us. So once like we rip ourselves of all of that stuff that they taught us, once again, mm -hmm. strip us back, back down to the core and start taking in raw material outside of what we've been taught and mm -hmm. force fed, you open up to feelings that not are put into you, but that were always there. You never got a chance to express them. And that's why this is so important, getting back to the basics. Really? That's why I feel like this book was so important because we have read their book which is the Holy Bible, which is the King James Version, which is the Living Bible, all of those. But have you even read from where you're from, your heritage, which what, what we grew up on, what we were supposed to grow up on? Like, they give us their black history when we go to school, but do you really know your true history? And are you okay with just knowing what they want to give us? How do you know that's the truth? I've heard a lot of it isn't the truth. But you're okay with the history that they give you and, and you're okay with saying, okay, well, that's my black history. No, I'm not okay with it. I'm not okay with this religion that you're trying to enforce on me and make me think that this is how it's supposed to be when it's a whole nother book that said that this is how I was, this is what I was born to be. It's you're all about right. being exposed right. and, and opening your mind. Like I had some people that, I have a lot of people that I inbox that said they was on board with it and I had some that was like, hmm, no. And I'm okay with that. If you're, that, if you're okay with it, that's okay. I'm not going to force me because I'm so awesome. I don't but want you, to force all this awesome. No, wait a minute. It's I, hypocrisy because look, they tell you like this is the land that are free. You have free will. That's what the Bible say. Uh -huh. Yet, when you go to choose something <laughs> outside of what you've been taught, then you're the one that's being wrong. But if it's free will, and even it, because if you ask me, the Bible, even this book, all all different religions are written by somebody. So it's not a matter of the source that it's coming from because they all were coming from somewhere at one point in time in history. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it starts with somebody. It's somebody's story. As an individual, why is it a problem that we can't depict which story fits our narrative? Right. That's the biggest problem. Like, we're being forced to take the Holy Bible and say, this is our Christianity, this is our... Well, Baptist. the thing that baffles me is, if we were sitting at a church with a, with a respectful pastor, it don't have to be a big church or a small church, but with a respectful pastor, and he came out with this book and said, congregation, for the next 60 days, we're going to read this book along with the Holy Bible, and then we're going to have Bible study on it. Everybody would go out and buy that book that was in that audience. Why? That, what? But if we say it, what makes us so different than him? You don't have the credentials. Mm. That's what I said before, though. They telling you that you got to go to school for this. You got to oh. go to school and pay all this money for me to teach you what you need to know for these other people. Because we control you even once you get this degree because we need you to put this message out there and they're going to listen to you because the bible already confirmed that we need one leader so we we so because he went to a school that they created and read the books that they created and then got a degree Preach. that they gave him that he got to pay back them for for this degree to come out and tell y'all what to learn and what to what to go by and what to believe in 
y'all gonna believe them because we said we didn't want to waste our money because all we had to do was pick up a book and we can tell y'all the same thing no because we teaching ourselves mm. so we look crazy because we're teaching ourselves interesting no that goes all the way back to slavery <laughs> <laughs> i mean for real slavery because <laughs> slaves needed somebody to tell them we how were they born felt. into this land mm. yeah we couldn't uh, speak if, 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 right. if master said i'm sick house nigga said we sick, master. We sick. Uh, house master ain't sick. <laughs> the master is sick because he's been programmed mm. through this here. We sick, master. Yeah, man. And all we saying is, just get back to the basics. Whatever your basic is, whatever you feel. Because I mean, this ain't for everybody. This is not. It's like not. I say, it's levels to this shit. And, it, and it's going to take you through. It's going to have you questioning everything. Like, man, I remember, i never forget when my third eye opened, I was sitting on my bed. And I almost literally had a nervous breakdown because I was just like, man. So shit really wasn't as, 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 as for these last 47 years. Like, shit just weird. Like, I really was like, I was conflicted because I was like, no, this can't be right. No, this is right, man. That, that all makes sense. But like I said, it's all about getting back to the basics. And you take from it what you take from it. I mean, if it's not for you, it's not for you. But why are you so afraid to expose yourself from it? Expose yourself to it, I'm saying. Why are you so afraid of exposing yourself? That's my question. A lot of people are even scared to even open up something that's going to that's gonna tell them that what they've been reading is wrong. It's work. But people don't want to work. They don't want to put the work in for nothing nowadays. Mm. Everybody just wants you to hand them stuff. Yeah, you're right. You see what I'm saying? You're so right. it's like it's not going to be a whole bunch of people that's pro this and pro that because not too many people is independently pro for anything. They pro for what everybody else is for. Mm. That's you the problem. What? I had a Facebook friend that uh, I had put up a, a woke quote and his comment was, fuck being woke. And when I read it, I was like, ooh. And so I said, you know what? Before I blocked him. <laughs> you know what? It's it's not the time right now to wake up the sheep. Now it's time to let the other lions know mm. we in the play. And then I blocked him because he's not relevant to me. Mm -mm. He's not relevant to our cause. Mm -mm. But a lot of people are not going to be. And that's okay. You yeah. know? Be the whole key is to just activate something in yourself to want to know more. I'm it's so much here to learn. I'm going to tell you something. One of my good friends, um, and actually he was the inspiration for this book because he had started reading it, a couple of pages out of it. And it was just crazy because I had woke up with that. That I was like, the topic of the podcast is going to be getting back to the basics. And then I ended up going on Instagram, he was reading this book, and I was like, dang, we need to form a book club. And that's a good book. So it all played in. But one thing he said was this, you would be dead wrong if you can sit back and watch stuff going on in your family or been a victim of hurt, molestation, see it going on in your family, see people not succeeding, people dying, young people out here being alcoholics, drug addicts, <coughs> whatever they out here doing. <laughs> And you sit back and not do nothing. I felt like he was talking to me. Mm. I felt like he was talking to me. Because I don't want to keep seeing it happen. Yeah, I don't. Why can't we be as successful as... And it ain't like we, we don't have success in our family. We do. We have... This girl taught herself how to be a beautician. She just went to school to get the degree because that's what they said she had to have. <laughs> but she didn't need it. She was doing her way before she even got the degree. That's what I'm saying. We, we we have crafts. I'm a whole vegan chef, and I ain't never went to school for mm -hmm. it. Period, poo. Oh, and I am, I'm a rainbow fairy. Let me tell you all that. We have gifts that we don't even have to go to school for. Yes, we do, because and we, we live in this land. And we are multi-million dollar people. Let me say that again. We are. Now, we could be. Now, we, we may are. be. We are multi-million dollar people. Ain't you ready to get your check in the bank? We're going to help y'all get them checks in the bank. But it starts with healing your heart, opening up your mind to different things, a different kind of thought process, yes. mm -hmm. and then speaking your reality into existence. We're going to help you get that. Because, honey, I'm not trying to be on the yacht by myself. Me and my sister and my brother and my husband and my daughter and my son-in-law, because he's going to be fine, too. You didn't we, say me. I ain't got you yet. I got to take a breath. 
And my mama and my daddy-in-law, we going to all be on this yacht together. We going to all be on this yacht together, honey. <laughs> oh, yes. That's what we going to be doing. But we want all of y'all, we want it to be a family affair. We want it to be a family affair. Norris, Underwood, Crane, oh, I don't, Johnson's. Whatever, whatever, though, whatever, though, whatever our bloodline is, and whatever ones unite with us, honey, we want to be a family affair. We want to be on the islands together. We want to own the island. Hello, my brother know a couple of them. We can go on. He gonna he, give he, us he a tour. One of them. I'm one. <laughs> she told him he knows some of them. He, he, he know where the islands is at, y'all. Come on, let's get our million so we can go get this island. They trying to make y'all take that COVID vaccine. Girl, you better quit playing. <laughs> Y'all, I'm telling y'all, I'm going to the island. Me and my husband hey. and my son-in-law, my mama uh, and husband-in-law, we going to the island with sister and brother-in-law. Hey, I got my warning. My tree fell already. <laughs> I got my warning. They blocked up my toilet today. <laughs> they flooded my whole apartment. That's okay. I'm still hey. going there. <laughs> hey, my tree fell last weekend. You got flooded out today. Hey, these was you warnings. Know what? I hope it's you crazy. pay attention to these warnings. That's, That's, right. no, it's crazy That's why I'm going to the islands. We never, we never said anything about that tree. Nah. And it shattered that oh nah. shit. We never did say anything about it, but I, as soon as I looked out there, and the midst of me talking about, thank you for shedding light on this place. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me open these blocks. Wait, you know what, though? We didn't even know what happened. This ain't even our journey to question. No. This is what God told us to do. We gonna do it until the end. So go ahead. <laughs> Drop them trees and flood them toilets. <laughs> we don't care. We still talking. Hey, we still here today having this podcast, aren't we? <laughs> and I must say, we are all looking fabulous. Fabulous. So I got a question for you. Yeah. Oh, yes. Now, past your trauma. Yes. Now, how did you turn that into a positive? Well, my, past my trauma, basically being able to help somebody else. I think the most rewarding thing, because I didn't know how many people was going to actually watch the podcast. I didn't think many people was going to even pay attention to it. I just asked God to give me a platform and I just started talking on it. And like I said, when me and my sister first did the first one, honey, it was, we had a great time though, but it was, it was hard. But when somebody inboxed me and told me that they were mirroring me, I never looked at myself as somebody that somebody would want to look like or be like or talk like or mimic, period. Not even my daughter, because I always let her have her own personality. Do you believe in twin flame? Oh, yeah. We got so many twin flames, though. Like, that's just it. She probably is truly mirroring you. That could be a twin flame. Like, you could be her answer to every wrong, and she could be your answer to every wrong. Well, that's what I'm saying. But I have a question for you. How are you turning your trauma into something positive? Come on, baby, talk to us. Talk to us. Turn your trauma into positive. How are you doing that? How am I doing it? Talk to us. Well, first I'm starting by healing myself. How are you healing yourself? I am. I'm forgiving myself for. You have to forgive yourself. Not being aware of the hurt I was going through. And I'm okay with that. So, okay. And I'm okay with the fact that I knew I wasn't okay, but I'm I am going in going in the direction to be okay. Yeah. That's good. That's the first step. That those are some of the very first I steps. Actually him. recognizing mm-hmm. that something ain't right. Yeah. You know, you know something ain't right. And I'm taking time for myself. Well, you have thing, to. The good thing about it is you got a uh, you got a great support team. <clears throat> you definitely got a Girl, great you gotta support team. You got to take care of yourself. Yeah, and then that's why I feel like you can't start, take care of your kids with, with me. because if you I'm, have to take yeah, care of yourself if I'm not first. Okay, then I, I can't. I, they're not gonna be okay. So I right. have to be okay for them to be okay. Yeah, yeah. And and and, and the good thing, like I said, you got a good support team. You definitely got a good support team that would allow you to have that time for self. But the one thing is, is you have to address your hurt. Forget what I told you. I'm telling you as your mother, go back. I'm talking to five-year-old Maisha, not 29-year-old Maisha. Baby, it's okay. We're going to get through this together, and you don't have to hurt no more. But you got, you can deal with it. Number one, what does that say? Admit your heart is broken. Number one, you have to admit it. Yeah. 
So what's the next one, Ma? I see you got on there, do good, feel good activities. What's a feel good activity? <laughs> Y'all know I like them feel it's good activities. <laughs> Yes. I don't, even, I don't even know what you're even reading. Um, but, uh, number eight, do feel good activities. Here you go, right here. You're still up here. I'm down here. Okay. Feel good activities. What it means to me is mm. <laughs> I know it makes me feel good. Behind heartbreak, I'm not going to wallow in that stuff. But how do you not? Because I'm going to get in touch with the fact that I'm not, well, actually, I'm supposed to breathe. I'm supposed to breathe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is good. I mm -hmm. like this. I'm supposed to breathe. Uh -huh. What do you do, though, Ma? Um, I go outside. Okay. Outside is always my go-to place. So when you go outside, what do you do? Garden. When that tree fell, I got scared. Had to pray on that stuff. Had to meditate about that stuff. Now I'm scared to go outside in the backyard because I'm like, I used to lay on that, lay on the ground and do my gardening and feel the sun as much as I could. Hey, and, you know. Okay, but you know, let me tell you what you just did. You just started talking about apples, and you went to oranges. You still ain't addressing. Again. Right, you didn't address. When you go outside, when you want to deal with your heartbreak, what do you do? What I do know you? when. I walk on. Hold on. Wait, wait. No, 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 you hold on. <laughs> no, you hold on. <laughs> I walk through grass. Okay, and when you're walking through the grass, what are you doing? I am. How do I explain this? I'm walking through the grass. I have to close my eyes because mm -hmm. that's what I'm doing. Okay. I'm walking through the grass. I am imagining. Okay. The top of my head opening up to the universe. And I'm allowing the universe to come through my crown chakra into my body. And that's what I do. Are you dealing with hurt yet? You still ain't deal with the hurt. Oh, you ain't deal with the hurt. I thought that's what we was trying to figure out. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. When you're going through heartbreak, what do you do, you heartbreak, yeah. what do, you do to you? Okay, so like thing? with me, because like. No, no. Well, wait. I, I had an epiphany. <laughs> an epiphany. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Diana has the table. Okay. Yeah, Diana has the table. <laughs> Let me talk, talk to you about this. After my 14-year-old rape, I was never able to deal with anything. Mm. Uh, I've never in my life beyond 14 been in love. And, um, oh man, this stuff is crazy. For... 50 years, I suppressed all kinds of feelings because I was detached. You know, we get to the bottom of something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Breakthrough. Detached. Hello. Breakthrough. Yes. Yeah, I, I had a breakthrough. I was detached. Now, in my last relationship, I took my detach me into that relationship but um i was able to undetach myself and i allowed myself to feel stuff that i n never in my whole life felt before never and you know what people say uh people say you live and you learn. Mm. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you what I did. I lived. I allowed myself to live in that relationship. I never did that before. I never in my whole life 
past 14 lived in a relationship. I took my detached self into all these relationships. My last relationship, I went into that relationship and I allowed myself to live. Now I'm gonna tell you what I learned because so much knowledge <coughs> was dropped. Knowledge that I will take with me for, for a lifetime. So much knowledge. And I had to weigh that stuff because the, the ending of the relationship was had me like I was livid, livid, livid. I was out. How, how do you sh- deal with it? Sh- I was so bad, but inside my head, y'all don't know this. Now I'm looking at the camera because y'all don't know this. I have a PTSD and through therapy, I've learned how to deal with my PTSD. Mm. Okay. So through my last relationship that I took my feelings into that I've never done before. I learned a whole lot of stuff in return, but I, the most important thing that I learned was I lived in that relationship and guess what? I'm going to live some more. I'm not going to shut myself down. I'm not going to become a victim of of mistreatment. I'm going to get out there again and live my life and I'm going to be happy. Okay, so let me say this. Look at the camera. Yes. And your ex, if they watching. What? What you want to say to your ex? Address it. What you want to say to your ex? Don't say their name. But if they watch it, what you want to say to them? You're going to release that heartbreak. You're going to release it. What you want to say I've to them? I've released it. I'm not, I'm not heartbroken. Oh, you like a mean one. That's <laughs> and no, 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 okay. no. No, 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 no. Go ahead. I want you to say, no. if you want to say something to somebody who broke your heart, what you want to say to them? Pick anybody. I, I have, um, anybody. I have not been broken. Yeah, uh, you hurt my feelings. You got me down for a little bit, but it's not within my queendom, my goddessness to um, falter. And I will never falter. I'm gonna be me. I'm gonna always rise above the nonsense, the bullshit. I'm gonna always be greater. Yeah, okay, well that's what you said to him then, Maisha. What you wanna say to somebody who broke your heart? Go ahead. You don't they, they, they don't say no name. What you want to say to them? I can't say what I want to say. Yeah, no, no. I'm not gonna cut in front of Nana. I mean, it's a way to say it. I don't have no proper way to say it. <laughs> <laughs> but just, just, but, just. Well, I'm gonna excuse you. I'm gonna excuse you. That's it. That's that's it. That's what that's you wanna say. So somebody broke your heart. Just suck a mean one. Just. Not I'm gonna beat your ass. Oh, no. Let me tell you. No, it's not. It's not about that. Yeah, yes, it is. Sometimes I feel it is. Like, I feel like not with me. I feel like what it is with me. I know I'm a good person, and I know I have a good heart. So if you did mistreat me, life is going to get you back. Okay. Karma, of course it will. Karma is a B word. Oh yeah, karma Trust is a B word. Of course it will. Of course it will. Baby Everybody sister, you got something you want to say to somebody? Oh, no. I've, I'm actually okay with anything that didn't work out in my favor as far as relationships or platonic or sexual, you know? Like, I always bring it back to myself. Like, I am truly a strong believer that we are the outcome of everything that happens around us. It's us. So yeah. if I was in a situation, I had to bring it back to me at the end of the day. And I've actually dealt with different upsets and stuff like that by smoking weed, overly smoking weed, you know, going to work high, which I don't do anymore, but in my past time, I like to smoke, but it's in my past time. But I do remember going through situations and feeling like, nah, I'm about to be high at work because I'm numb. I need to make myself feel good so I don't think about it. I'm kind of like what he said. And that's crazy because when I was growing up, I used to always be like, I feel like I got a little bit of boy in me. 
You know, because when I when I go through heart heartbreak, I push myself. That's how I got so skinny working at that company. Like I drove myself to go hard, just to go hard, and I was neglecting everything on the inside of me to not deal with the pain that I was. And, and that's what and that's one of the things that I find. Well, we have the female and the male uh, DNA in us. It's just a balance of both of them. Like the the female, because we are females, is more prominent, but we still supposed to have mm -hmm. our masculine part as well and that's where you get that from but that was one like I say one of my biggest issues like with my best friend and, and, it, and it's sad because it, it hurts my feelings because that's how I was when Trey died when Trey passed away I went right back to work as soon as I got off the plane I was at work the next day people looked at me like I was crazy but that's what I had to do to numb what was going on but yeah. when I tell you when I finally decided to deal with it I waited three years to deal with it and it felt like he had just died that day it felt like it, that day like it hurt that bad I probably even worse than the day he passed because it was three years I had held on to it. So definitely dealing with matters of your heart is so, so important. So, so important because we, like I said, it causes so many other things like anxiety, like depression, like, you know, thinking you're going to fail at everything you put your hands on. You have to definitely kill the matters of your heart. I know you got some stones here. Queen Cheryl, you want to talk a little bit about your crystals that you have? Okay, let's talk about rose quartz. Oh, you like that one too? Yeah. My baby got on rose quartz. This is our go-to stone. I love all rose of us. Quartz. I love it. Rose quartz. It eases stress and feelings of jealousy and resentment. Oh, I got on rose quartz too. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that is my. This is one of my favorite stones. This is one of my favorite ones. If you're feeling unlucky in love right now. This is the stone for you to go to. Y'all see, I got it on right <laughs> Y'all see, husband, I'm waiting. It Goodness. will turn negative energy into positive. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you. Crystal quartz. Another favorite. Yes. This will magnify any stone you have. Mm -hmm. So, if you're feeling negative energy, partner the two. Mm. That's going to magnify, get rid of neg negative energy, magnify it. All right. And it will magnify anything we got sitting here on this table. What's next? You got the emerald. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the emerald. Now, you don't see the emerald, but, but it's in crusted in, in the stone mm -hmm. and it's natural emerald so it will help in recovery with healing negative emotions and it will also rejuvenate you I so that at home and I ain't never I ain't even drawn to it it's, it is a known fact that emotional feelings feel the same way to the brain as physical feelings so if you're physically hurt and you're emotionally hurt it feels the same way in the brain so it helps us to deal with those negative feelings in the brain rotocrosite all these stones well they do the same thing but they have Something a little bit different, and that's why it always attracted me. See, I got this rotor, rotor, what is this, rotor nights my mother gave me? Sister Stones. Yeah, rotor night. I run one of my favorites too. I keep it in my purse. Now, rotor crocite is soothes emotional stress, improves self birth because when, we, when we've been um, emotionally mm -hmm. detached, emotionally abused. We kind of turn that situation on to us, not to the person that abused us. Yeah. We, th we think that it was something wrong with us. Yeah, yeah, definitely. This stone here, it would help us turn that situation around. It's nothing wrong with us. Nothing. A lot of times when we get molested or abused uh, or any kind of hurt, like with relationships, of course, you are supposed to hold yourself accountable as well because you played a part in that relationship. And like I said, with me, 
a lot of times it was just opening the door when I seen the red flags. A lot, so I had to hold myself accountable because I shouldn't even have opened up the door when I knew this person wasn't right for me. But when somebody hurts you, um, like even like on my daughter when she was five and she was hurt, that's not your fault. Don't think that you did anything wrong and that that person is sick. So mm -hmm. that's what that's that that's a good stone to help you to basically generalize the hurt that is for you that you may have created on your own and that was not for you that was somebody else imposed on you it's a difference but at the end of the day hurt is hurt and we're here to help you heal from it that's right that's and, right and now what is this one? Oh, I one forgot. of my favorites that i'm trying to take but i can't I love it. That's only because this stone uh, is so pretty. It resonates with me as Sagittarius, and it resonates with you as Gemini. As Queen Gemini, sun, my sun sign, my moon sign, Gemini, Gemini, on both sides. I'm for real. I'm a real deal. Holy shit. I'm telling that right now. That's what I'm going to tell you. That's what I want to tell you somebody who hurt me, honey. You just lost one. You he lost just two. just lost. Yeah. Four. <laughs> You had you a whole menage a trois, didn't even know it. Didn't even know it. You just lost one. Okay, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> orange cow, cow side. <laughs> oh, y'all, I'm crazy. I know, we have a good time. It See, will come give bring, this back. It will raise your level of happiness and joy. Yes. It cleanses your body mm. and your environment. Mm. That's why it sits on my fireplace. I love it. I'm definitely going to get me that one. I'm definitely going to get me that of one. Of negative energy and depression. It cleanses your environment. And that's what we're saying as far as like the heart and the mind. We don't know which one is the main controller, but they all work together. Because when somebody breaks your heart, say if you went with somebody, and this happens a lot, you go with this person, they don't want to be with you no more, you, they break your heart, you get depressed. That's a, that's a mental thing. Depression isn't in your heart. It's, it, it was a cause because somebody hurt your feelings. And now in your head, you're depressed, you're sad, and everything else is shutting down. So we have to work together to heal both of them. And like I said, mm -hmm. you have to start with those emotions in your heart. Definitely have to start with those emotions in your heart. So anybody else want to talk about stuff? I just want to say it starts with the heart first. It starts. You have to deal with the heart first definitely 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 and like i said we done sat out here and gave you guys an open invitation to trade day 2022 memorial day weekend whatever weekend and fall on we gonna come to cleveland and we gonna go to the grave we're gonna make a weekend of it we're gonna go to the grave sites we're gonna go visit our our, our ancestors and then we're gonna get together we're gonna have a barbecue we're gonna celebrate birthdays we're gonna make it a whole shit day. but we this is gonna be our first official trade day family reunion Y'all are invited. Y'all know now. And, and, and if you show up, you show up. If you don't, we want to know why you didn't show up. We want to know why because it ain't like we didn't give you enough advance. You want to say anything, baby girl? Because we know you're going to be there showing out. Your brother at Trey Day. We know you're going to be showing out. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Anybody else? No. Brother, you got something to say? Thank you. <laughs> you are welcome anytime. You are definitely welcome. So peace, love, and light. Dang, I, I wish my grand, I could have brought my grandbaby. I taught him how to do peace and love, and I'm teaching him how to do light in sign language. Oh, yes. wow. Peace, love, light. Oh, you just spelling it. Yeah, oh, peace, love, and light. Saying, like making the word. No, I, I ain't got okay. that good yet, but I do know the letters. Peace, love, and light. And we'll see you guys next time. Mwah. Mwah. Hashtag. <laughs>